Welcome to the third Fridays in May concert here at Trinity English Lutheran Church. I'm Robert Hobby, Director of Music. Welcome. It's also a great delight to have with us today the Fort Wayne Children's Choir Chamber Singers under the direction of Jonathan Bissaro and with the wonderful accompaniment of Irene Ator. Welcome, it's wonderful to have you here. Jonathan will have an opportunity later to introduce the singers to you individually, but for now, they're going to begin with the music, beginning with Mozart's Ave Verum. Good afternoon, and thank you to Trinity English Lutheran Church and to Dr. Hobby for hosting us in this Fridays in May performance. The Fort Wayne Children's Choir, you hear the name children, and you might think younger ones, and as rightly you should, but then you see these students and they're not quite so young. These students have been in the Children's Choir for many years, and many of them are seniors this year, which makes me a little sad. We'll talk a little bit more about that as we go. Uh, but the children's choir starts in about third grade and goes through high school with our curricular program. We also have programs for children zero through 18. So if you have a kid that likes to sing, you should think about having them be in the Fort Wayne Children's Choir. The first piece by Mozart, Ave Verum Corpus, has been a part of our music for a long time. We have another piece that we'd like to share with you by Beethoven, Elegischer Gesang, and while this piece is new to us, it's not new to the musical world. This song that is an elegy, we learned this year in honor of Beethoven's birth in 1770. 
So, without further ado, we'd like to share with you Beethoven's Elegischer Gesang. We'd like to end the first part of our performance with another classic gem of the choral repertoire, Thomas's Talus's If Ye Love Me.
the Fort Wayne Children's Choir has had an interesting time during the course of the pandemic. We looked at what we could do as an organization. You see, the Fort Wayne Children's Choir, while we do have excellent performances, if I may say so, we really focus on teaching music literacy to children from all backgrounds. And we were able to continue teaching throughout the course of the pandemic. We took a little extra long spring break when everything began, but we never really stopped. And our students have shown incredible resilience. That resilience stems from the student leadership that we have in our organization, and that is mostly found in this room here today. I'd like to take an informal moment, and they don't know I'm going to do this. How many of you are seniors? That makes me very nervous for next season, but very proud of how hard they have worked this year. See, the Children's Choir has a lot of students in it that aren't here today. We have 14 seniors that are graduating this season, and in those 14 seniors, we have a collective 124 years of time in the FWCC. So, allow me a moment to introduce all of them, starting on the other side, in the front, we have Alexis Rios and Delaney Fosnaw, and behind them we have Marissa Butcher and Rebecca Staples. As we keep going across the ensemble in our tenors, in the front we have Sam Poor and Gregory Keller, and behind them we have Cooper Inman and Jackson McKinney. Then in our bass section, you'll see we have John Woods in the front, and then we have Michael Guerin and Daniel Bates behind. And I'm trying to see around the corner here my altos. In the front we have Allison McQueen and Anna Dooley. And behind we have Emily Robinson and Emma Hallman. These students have put in a lot of time with the Children's Choir. The Children's Choir just recently shared this music at our spring concert. It was the first chance our organization has had to share a concert live and in person in 18 months. This concert used the theme of nature and animals in particular. So our next set of music has some very different animal settings. First, we would like to share with you Felix Mendelssohn's Die Nachtigall. Thank you. That classic Mendelssohn piece 
we're going to put right next to a, some poems by Ogden Nash to help with the absurd. You see, we're used to singing in beautiful spaces like this and preparing ourselves to sing a beautiful concert, indeed, but at a ballpark, we'll have a very different feel. And perhaps we might even be interrupted by some of those animals, nightingales flying around, hopefully avoiding my hair. These four animal songs by Ogden Nash will do one right after the other. The duck, the kitten, the panther, and the hippopotamus. And as you might expect in poems by Ogden Nash, be prepared for a punchline at the end of each of them. These are Jean Kosky's four animal songs.
So, we've talked a little bit about old music. We've talked a little bit about the music that we're doing today and some upcoming performances. We'd like to sing now a more contemporary piece by Erlene Renz called Kibo. It uses elements of some Japanese text, and I picked it because a while ago, I said that the children's choir was going to Japan. Of course, all of our travel plans have had a pin put in them in the past year and a half. But now, we do have hope. And indeed, that is what Kibo means, hope. We have hope for the future. We have hopes to take our music and share it abroad. And I have hope that these fine students will continue in their gift of music for the rest of their lives. And I have hope in the world because of them. We'd like to share with you Kibo. The Fort Wayne Children's Choir was started in 1973. Jocelyn Bassett had the vision of having a community choir for children to sing. Her students at her school didn't have enough time in music class in 1973. I'm here to tell you that in 2021, it's worse. 
The need of the children's choir is great in our community, and the benefits are even greater. I am very proud to lead this organization, and in the course of my time in the choir, our last piece has been sung a whole lot. And you put in all of the years of the children's choir, I can't even tell you how many times we have sung John Rutter's For the Beauty of the Earth. I could think of no better way to end our program with you today than to share this piece with you. Well, thank you so much, singers, for a lovely, 
wonderful program. Thank you, Mr. Bissaro, an honor to have you with us, at, as well as Irene Ator. Thank you for your wonderful music. I want to thank today uh, Joe Collins, our videographer, and Brian Eastman, our audio supervisor, for helping us make this possible. Certainly, we want to thank the Plogster Foundation, which makes it financially possible to do the Fridays in May and September. If you're able to join us next week, I invite you to, to hear and, and enjoy the sounds of Luke Fitzpatrick on the flute and Alexander Claypock on the piano. Thanks again for joining us today. Have a great afternoon. <laughs>